Welcome to the Our Team Podcast, powered by EXP Realty. Are you an agent looking to level up? Are you someone looking to buy or sell real estate? Fantastic. This is the show for you. Welcome back to the Our Team Podcast. This is Gabriel Talamantes and my co-host here, Luke Cameron. We are happy to be back here in the studio. Gabe, welcome back. Yeah, we're excited to, to be here and... Um, and what we have in store for you today and uh, what this episode is going to be about is the three first steps to buying your first home. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, this is good because I think I think as, as newer agents, I think we work with buyers a lot more than sellers. Mm-hmm. That's at least that's been my experience. It's I've I've only worked with two sellers so far in my I just passed my one year real estate career a couple couple weeks ago. Um and I've worked with two sellers. In one year, I've worked with two sellers. Now, maybe that's because I haven't been working as hard as I should have. But uh, I've been working with mainly buyers. And I find that crazy to know that the, all of these people are, some of them are first-time buyers. Some of them are, are investors, so they have a lot of properties. But um, I've wanted to work with more sellers to get that experience. But today, obviously, we're going to be talking about that. But how have you felt you've been working with more buyers in your first kind of year of real estate or more sellers? I'd say it's a good half and half. Okay. Um, But for sure, yeah, getting started in in real estate, um, you're going to gain a lot of experience with working with buyers. And so um, I wanted to do this episode and kind of dive deep into um, you know what the what are the first steps to yeah. owning your first home? Because I have I have a lot of clients that are first time home buyers and um, and um, you know they don't necessarily know the entire process and right. how it goes down. But yeah. there's all the little micro things that go into um, buying your first home. Yeah. But these are you can't buy your first home without these three <laughs> that's steps. That's right. Yeah. Um, no, that's uh, it's good because we I try to cover all of these whenever I do buyer consultations. You know, we, we do those for, for free. So if anyone's interested in a buyer consultation, feel free to reach out to either of us. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's one thing that people don't think about is the very first one, which is what we're going to talk about, which we'll dive into. Um, and people go, well, why, does, why is that important? And I go, well, we're going to talk about that. So why don't you start us off talking about the first step of kind of how to go into what goes into buying your first home? So before you even start looking on Zillow, looking at homes or doing anything, you need to have a good credit score. Correct. At least a decent credit score. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I recommend, you know, so with the FHA loan requirements, which with an FHA loan, you can put three and a half percent down, mm-hmm. um, which is very low. A, yeah. lot of, a lot of buyers think, oh, I have to put 20 percent down. Like right. I'm never going to be able to save up that much. You can put three and a half percent down with an FHA loan. Yeah. Would, um, and the minimum requirement uh, credit score for that is only 580. That's so easily That's achievable. That's so low. It's so it's, easily I mean, achievable. Some people you're thinking, whoa, 580, how am I going to get there? I go, man, I'm, I mean, I don't personally know my credit co- credit score off the top of my head, but 580 seems uh, it seems too low in my opinion it is, it is, <laughs> to, to buy a home. But it is so attainable. Yeah, it, is, it is attainable. It's very easily attainable for, for the, the average person. Yeah. Um, if you're just... You know, um, if you have if you've had a credit score for a while and and maybe you have bad credit, then I would um, start working on that. You know, um, if you don't have any credit and you're and you're younger, um, maybe you're not even 18 yet. Who knows? Um, you know, start start working on building your credit. You know, yeah. what I did, what I did to to learn about how to build credit is just YouTube, YouTube University. That's right, just YouTube University. Go on YouTube and look up how do I build. How do how do I build a credit score? How do yeah. I get my credit score That's to right. higher? Um, there's there's no ex- there's literally no excuse why yeah. you shouldn't be building your credit. You're gonna the higher the credit you have, higher credit score you have, the better um, loan you're gonna get, the better yep. interest rate you're gonna get. Yeah. Um, and overall, you're just gonna be ending up paying less if you focus on getting the higher your your credit score as high as possible. That's right. And so, um, do you have any any uh, thoughts on that? I think as younger people, we're not taught about credit as much as we should be. And then we, like you said, you learned through YouTube University, which is great. (laughs) Um, I was able to learn through, I was called a secured card. So when I got my first credit card through my bank, I put three, it was, it was strange, but it was, it was taught to learn credit and understand it and build it very slowly. So I went in and put $300 of my own money into this account. So it was my money, not the bank's money. Um, and I had a $300 limit on my credit card. Mm. And, uh, and then I slowly, I would 
buy stuff, pay it off, buy stuff, pay it off. Um, and then as soon as I reached a six month period, they said, okay, here's your $300 back. Your limit is now raised to a thousand. And then I, I read the, you know, when they give you those, those long pamphlets, I actually mm-hmm. read that, you know, sometimes <laughs> that just ends up in the recycle for most people. Yeah. But I read that and was able to understand what that means about my credit. And ever since then, I, you know, you hear, oh man, my credit score is so low. Or I saw those, you know, commercials as kids. I was like, I don't want to ruin my credit. So I pretty much treated my, my credit card as a debit card. And I still yeah. keep that to this day, um, which helps me, you know, when I eventually end up buying a home, I'll be able to have that credit score that's needed. But it's very important. It's mm-hmm. very important. And if you don't know your credit score, look that up. Know your credit score. I think it's important. <laughs> yeah, credit karma is free. You can check yeah. your credit score there yep. as many times as you want. Um, I recently just had a client who who thought that um, if he checks it, he can only check it like three times a year. Mm. And, and he mm-hmm. thought it was like a hard inquiry and stuff. I'm like, no, man. That's a myth. Credit karma is 100% free, yeah. and you can check your credit score every single day. And Are you, you sponsored can... by credit karma? Is that what we're – Credit Karma, sponsor sponsor me, please. (laughs) Um, Okay. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, No, not yet. Not yet? No, there's still a lot to talk about. Okay. There's still a lot to talk about. Credit is very important. You, um, I like what you said that not a lot of families or people talk about credit, but it's very important. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, like what you said, so there's a secured credit card, which what that is, is you put in the, the deposit. Um, say like what Luke did, 300 bucks, and yeah. that's your monthly limit. Um, make sure you're always paying off um, uh, every single month yeah. in full. Never carry a balance. A lot of people, for some reason, think that you need to carry a balance, um, even if it's just very small, to build your credit. I know. You do not need to do that. No. Keep your spending low. Um, there's a lot There's a lot that goes into it. That's why I say <laughs> yeah. there's so much to cover in that. That can be a completely different episode. Yeah. Just go on YouTube and look it up. Yeah. How to build how to YouTube build University. Free. And one last one last thing on credit is when you're barely when you're just getting started off building your credit, do not pay for a credit card. Get a free one. There's a million free credit cards that you can get. Don't pay a yearly yeah. um, an annual limit for, yeah. for a credit card. You do not need to be doing that right from the start. I, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> that's a that's not a smart move. Yeah, no. In the beginning. Um but yeah, so let's touch in on the on the Second most important thing that you Number need two. to do before even going on Zillow or looking at homes or anything is you need to save up for a down payment. That's right. And um, that's the that's the thing that takes the longest amount of time. Oh, man. There's, uh, there's, a, yeah. there's a lot that goes into that, and uh, it might be a struggle sometimes. But, I mean, if, if uh, home ownership is really that worth it to you, then you'll find a way to make it happen. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, saving up for a down payment. Um, obviously it depends on how much you're putting down. Like, uh, like what we talked about earlier is an FHA loan, right. which is, which is a loan, um, that, uh, the, the fed, the fed, the, the government pretty much, um, insures the bank, right. um, of their, of their money, of their loan. Um, and so with an FHA loan, you can put as little as uh three and a half percent down. Right. Um, and so that, that is, that is a really <laughs> small, small amount yeah um you know let's just let's just say a, a five hundred thousand dollar home which is the average um sales price of a home in menifee yeah three and a half percent down would be 17 17 grand seventeen thousand okay. five hundred. you're good at that the, quick math yeah i'm i'm impressed i, I think, can't do that i think that was exact <laughs> okay 17 grand uh, 17 five uh okay. seventeen thousand five hundred. okay um and uh but don't forget this is something that um a lot of my buyers actually don't know about too mm-hmm. is closing costs. Yes. So there's a down payment, which is that seventeen thousand five hundred dollars, yeah. but then you there's closing costs that are involved, like loan origination fees, mm. uh, title fee. There's mm-hmm. a bunch of little extra fees that go into um, a deal to to make it actually close and for you to own it. Um, and uh, typically around um, closing costs are around you know two to three percent of the purchase price. So that's another ten thousand dollars fifteen thousand dollars that you might have to um bring up and so um just making sure that you're prepared for that um and uh yeah so you have you you cannot (laughs) you cannot go into a home without save without a credit score right decent credit score and um your down payment and closing costs unless of course your va which can be a completely that's yeah (laughs) that's a different thing i wanted to say 
Um, when it comes to loans, you know, and your, your down payment, there's a big myth about you need 20% to buy a home. You need 20% of that, of the purchase price, uh, as a down payment. That's actually, that's false. You are able to get a home like you talked about with an FHA 3.5%. Mm-hmm. And that might, that might be brand new to someone who's listening. You don't need 20%. You can get it with 5%. It's that's, I, I had a buyer. We got in at a, it was six. 625 and they were able to put 5% down, 95% on a loan and is it, you, there it was. And they said, "Oh man, but they they were a young couple. They said, "How are we supposed to get into this home? We don't have 20%." I said, "Well, no, you don't need. You don't need 20%. You just you need, need 5." Yeah. And, and that's a conventional loan, 5%, 5% down to the purchase price. Mm-hmm. Um so yeah, the the down payment is scary because that's a big chunk of money coming out of your pocket. Um but ultimately, the larger the down payment, the less your mortgage will be. Of course, yeah. yeah. The more the more money you put down, um, the less your monthly payment would yeah. be. Um, but yeah, there's there's a ton of different loan programs that can help you get get into a house. Yes. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, um, and closing costs are actually uh, a lot of people don't know are negotiable. You can negotiate right. with the seller of the home to actually help you pay for those closing costs, either in full, maybe they can pay half. Everything is negotiable. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, just keep that in mind. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so those two things. And there's one more, one more thing. That one you, more. That you need. You need a reason why you're doing it. If you don't have a reason why you're building your credit score <laughs> and saving up $17,000, $20,000, yeah. then – then you, you need something to, to push you and right. something that you need an attainable goal. Yep. And so you need to have a reason why you're wanting to own a home in the first place. Um, and, uh, well, what do you, what do you think about that? Luke? Well, why is a big thing of what we do, what we do is people are buying a home for a reason. So, so you obviously have a why uh, we, we talk all the time about future of yeah. what, you know, what, what leads us. Everyone has a why for something. Why are we doing this podcast? It's to, to inform people about these things, about three, four steps to buying a home, what you need before you even start looking on Zillow, Redfin, real, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, because if you don't have a why, there's no motivation to do it. Yeah. If you are not thinking about, man, in five years, I want to host Thanksgiving. Because that's that's one of my buyers. They're, 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 oh, in, in five years, I'm going to be one. It's going to be my kitchen. My backyard, my everything. They said, yeah. I'm going to do that. I said, okay, don't go out to eat every weekend. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> that's your why. Your why is guiding you to purchasing your home, your dream home, whatever that's going to be. And they said, their credit's great. They're building up their money for their down payment. And as soon as they get, now they're, they're rare. They go, I'm going to put 20% down. I said, okay, put 20% down. That's awesome. That will let you have a more affordable mortgage, more affordable payment. Mm-hmm. Um, but the why drives you. It has to drive you. If you don't have a why, there's no reason. Like you said, there's no reason to do it. Yeah. So the reason we bring that up, I think, is people look on Zillow all day long. You know, mm-hmm. I, I do it sometimes. I'm like, oh, what's, what's out there? I mean, I, I usually use the MLS because it's a little bit more accurate. But uh, people just browse Zillow. It's like, oh, you look on Zillow. Yeah, I look on Zillow. I just look at things, fun things, you know. Yeah. Um, but there's no, I mean, I'm not going after any of those homes. That's not what I want. That's not my why. So a big, I'd say the biggest thing out of all of those is the why. Because without that, there's no, like you said, there's no reason to boost your credit score. Yeah. There's no reason to save for your down payment. Yeah. There's no reason to care. Mm. You have to care about what you're purchasing. Yeah. 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 Um, I would say that that is the biggest thing too, that you, you need the why to for, for you to be motivated or, mm-hmm. or um, you know, disciplined to save up. Because, I mean, let's be honest, like, um, it's, sometimes it's, it's difficult to, to save up that oh much gosh. money. You know, it might, yeah. take, it might take a year. It might take two years. It might take three, four, or five. Who knows? Yep. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, as, I mean, yeah, you need a why. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if you're, if, you're, if you're renting right now and you want to own – and you want to own a home, but you, you know, you're driving a Tesla and you have a $500, <laughs> you have a $500 car payment. What are you doing? Yeah. Sell the Tesla. <laughs> get a little, wow. get a little Honda Accord, 
Honda Civic, something good on gas. I'm going Dave Ramsey over here, man. <laughs> you get passionate about it. I love it. <laughs> and uh, and yeah, you know, t- you need a. Let me give you a tip on on saving money. Okay. Um, Bonus tip. You with need Gabe. to you, first. You need to. Yeah, this is a personal finance tip. All this right. is kind of off topic, Hit but me. I want to be able to help you guys. Take a look at your entire like your entire situation. Where are you at right now? Take a look at your income. You need to know exactly how much you're you're making and you're putting in your bank account every single month. And mm-hmm. you need to know how much money is being taken away from you every single month. Yeah. Um, I use this app. It's called. Oh, I don't have it on me. Um, it's called every. I think it's called Every Dollar. Yeah. Um, That's through Dave Ramsey. Yeah. I yeah, use yeah. that as well. Oh, you do. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, so yeah, I use Every Dollar, and uh, it's a great app. It's free, 100% free, um, and it categorizes everything like groceries gas um work related stuff like everything you Mm -hmm. can create your own categories you need to find out where all your money is going you need to find out how much money you're spending here 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 and here and how you can reduce those costs and what is really important to you Mm -hmm. um you know like i said in the example like with the tesla like if you're finding that like $700 $700 a month is going just for you to own a Tesla and look flashy, but then you're never going to be able to own a home. Like, yeah. Is it worth it? Yeah. Like, is it worth it to be driving the Tesla like, and not building general generational wealth for you and your family and yeah. securing a, you know, a amazing asset like real estate mm-hmm. um, and not a car. <laughs> um, so yeah, you need to look at, look at the big picture. Yeah. Look how much you're making, look how much is going away. And, um, fine tune all those things and mm-hmm. find and that's how you're going to be able to save up as much money as possible yeah. for you to to own your home and then uh once you fi- figure all that out you're going to call me or luke that's right and we're going to take you through the process of buying your first home that's right <laughs> me and gabe <laughs> just us <laughs> yeah just us that's right so i think that's i think we can kind of wrap it up there yeah i think that's a good kind of breakdown you 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 want on a a budgeting tangent, but that's okay. No, that's good. No, no, no. It's no, not a tangent. The people it's, need that. They, they need that. They do. You can't do. just tell them, save money. Okay, Live go. better. Like, you can't just tell them, like, save money, start building credit. Yeah. Like, go do it. Like, yeah. you, need a, you need a guideline. Use YouTube. Use YouTube. There's, a, there's no excuse. There's no yeah. excuse for, for why you can't <laughs> save money. There's, there's a why. The, yeah. The, no. And, yeah. Find your why. All right. Um, with all that being find said. Find your why. I like that. <laughs> find yeah. your why. And sometimes it might take a while for you to find your why. You might not figure it out right now or yeah. maybe in a week. It might take you a month to figure out exactly why you even want to own a home in the first place. Mm. Um, but, you know, the sooner the better. That's so, good. All right. Uh, with all that being said, I hope you guys um, enjoyed the podcast. If you um, have any other questions, please feel free to reach out and leave us a comment. What's your why for wanting to buy own a home? So until next time, I'm Luke Cameron. And Gabriel Talamantes. Hey, wait, before you go, would you do us a favor? If you found any value in this content, would you please like and subscribe to it? Maybe even leave a comment. It really helps us out.